Hey guys, uh, a little quick one, really quick one here. Um, several mica disease, uh, I'm sure some of you guys have heard of it, uh, but in the in the more modern, let's just say, when I say modern, I'm talking about the later versions of the little American Fives that has the small IF transformers, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. It has the transformers that look like this. This is the IF transformers. Let me get some light on there where you can see. It looks like this guy. Anyway, uh, silver mica disease is if you can go in there, you know, you get an old radio and you go in there and you change all the capacitors and all the resistors and all this mess and you get in, clean the tubes and check all the tubes and you do all of that good stuff and you turn it on, you're getting ready to hear it or do an alignment and it just sounds like <laughs> sound like about 15 raccoons fighting each other hitting each other with a bag of potato chips, each one of them anyway, that noise is uh, more than likely coming from the transformers there's, there's usually two or three of them in a set but uh, they get what they call silver mica disease and um, if you look right down in the bottom here, this is the bottom of the transformer. Let me get uh, these leads off of there. Show you a trick. You have to pull the transformer out because the uh, the silver mica capacitors is actually built into the uh, into the transformer. But right here is the bottom of the transformer here. And if you look real careful, you'll see. Let me get some light here. You'll see something in this clear plastic, or was clear plastic at one time. You'll see something in the bottom. You see that little rig right there? That's a big rivet. And uh, right there is two pieces of uh, two pieces of mica that has some leads coming out in, it. and it's a built basically it's a built-in capacitor to these coils here on the primary and the secondary. And um, what happens is, is the silver mica means that uh, some of the uh, some of the silver uh, in these contacts here migrates. In other words, the uh, ions of the silver will start migrating into the uh, mica, and when it does, it causes a uh, connection or a, a uh, uh, what you call a sneak path. I guess you could call it. And when it does that, it creates noise. And that's where the noise is coming from. Now, what you can do to troubleshoot that, you need one of these ICOs right here, or a signal tracer with noise function. This noise function on this signal tracer, very handy. It also, you can test carbon resistors and components that might be causing noise and causing degradation of your uh, performance of your receiver or whatever you're working on. In this case, we're going to use the noise function to see if this is my problem. I'm hooking one lead to the... Now this is the uh, primary right here, and this is the secondary right here of the transformer. Uh, if you look right here in the schematic, this is the primary right here, and this is the secondary. So as a transformer, this side and this side should be 100% isolated from each other. Okay? That's just what transformers do. So I'm going to hook my test leads on primary, one leg of the primary and one leg of the secondary. Alright, I'm going to go up here to function. Turn my gain down. Do function here. And we're going to put this in the noise mode. Now we have it noise mode. Listen. That sounds just like what I was getting in the receiver. But what this does is, is this produces, has a, uh, uh, injects a voltage. I don't know how much voltage. I wouldn't want to put my fingers across it. It injects a fairly high voltage. And uh, then it takes, apparently it samples one of the high side of this and injects it into the, uh, into the amplifier stage. And very, very useful tool. Very cool.
So see if this thing was working right and it didn't have the silver mica issue, you wouldn't hear anything. It would be an open connection because the transformer is isolated. However, So the silver mica has been proven in this transformer and this transformer. Both of them have it. Just so happens the receiver that I'm working on, this is the T1 here, that's this one. And let's see. This guy right here is T2. So this is T1. T2. So this is the one I'm working on. Just so happens they give you the value of the capacitors. And I forgot to order a 125. That's special. I think I got one. There's two 100s in this each side of this. That's no problem. And then there's a 13 uh, picofarad here, 105 picofarad here, and 125 picofarad from one of these to there. So Anyway, very useful little tool here. If you don't have a signal tracer, you could rig up a high voltage power supply of about 100 volts or something like that and use a resistor like a 47K or something like that, you know, to with a capa uh, capacitor. And you could, you could make your own if you want to, but I like this. If you can get one of these signal tracers like this guy right here, um, you'll be doing yourself a favor. It comes in handy from time to time. Has an output transformer here. It's got a test speaker, test damp, got ground. You can hook a scope to it to monitor whatever's going on. Uh, this one does analog input, RF input. You have to have a detector probe to do that. So very cool little thing. It also gives you a watt meter. I don't know how it works, but uh, this is a very cool little thing. And I just wanted to show you all that. Uh, silver mica disease. That's how you can troubleshoot it. Um, prove it once uh, before you take those things apart. So, anyway, that's my little tip for the day. Um, so, we'll see you on the next one. Talk to y'all later. Bye.